This following review is brought to you part by the letter S for Sexy Hippo. Oh yeah. We are so gonna get sued by PETA for this. Tonight, today actually, we're going to be reviewing the 1989 Peter Jackson film, Meet the Feebles. Yes, believe it or not folks, there was a time when Peter Jackson wasn't a multi-million dollar director. He was a struggling filmmaker in New Zealand, wanted to make his mark in the world, and he wanted to make some films with his friends, and this is what he came up with. Now, this is an interesting film because this is his second ever film he ever made, really. Yeah, he did, right after Bad Taste. Yeah, which, uh, fun little fact, actually. If you look really closely in the crowd, it's sort of like a one frame kind of thing, though. You can see one of the aliens from Bad Taste in the crowd, actually. And an even more fun fact, the guy who is in the suit for that is... Peter Jackson. That's right, it's Peter Jackson in the suit. That's his cameo, folks. And I was thinking, is Peter Jackson trying to set up a Peter Jackson cinematic universe? Well, it seems like it. I mean, like, there have been, like, references to Dead Alive and King Kong and Tintin. Exactly, and I think even, uh, even to this day, Peter Jackson is still hold those films near and dear to his heart, pretty much. Mm hmm Now, what is this movie about? It seems to be kind of like, um... A very dark uh, portrayal of, say, like, the Muppets or Sesame Street, kind of. But it also manages to show, like, sort of the seedy underbelly you see in showbiz, like, stuff like that. Like, don't show kids this, folks, at all. No. This is not for children, at all. So, in a way, it's like, um, it's like showgirls in terms of showing the darker side of show business. Yeah, but I didn't get that feeling... What I was thinking when I was watching the film is I thought, man, this is kind of like a live-action Fritz the Cat kind of movie almost. With violence, swearing, drugs, sex, all that stuff. Yeah. But more or less, uh, it seems to be also... Uh, it doesn't seem to be just one story. It's like... I think I counted on almost like a multitude of stories all tangled up together. Kind yeah, of and that can... That can go either way. Mm. But what I like about Jackson with this, he always gives enough time for each story, and he always seems to focus on them. He doesn't seem to leave them up to chance or just leave them at the last minute kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like some filmmakers, he knows how to get the story started, and he knows how to wrap them up pretty much. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting film because this is one of Peter Jackson's more expensive films he made at, up to this point. Like, yeah. Bad Taste wasn't shot for a lot of money, but neither was this film. But they did get a pretty good grant from the Film Commission of New Zealand there. Yeah, except for when they were shooting the uh, oh. Vietnam scenes. Yeah, that was uh, around the time where the film commissioners were kind of you know, wanting to, like, strangle Jackson because he was over budget, he was over schedule, and... They just wanted to kill him, pretty much, because they thought he was going to waste all their money, pretty much. And actually, in order to get the commission away from them, they entitled the scene Frogs of War, pretty much, to make sure that nobody would uh, spy on them or anything like that. Right on, right on. And a lot of that scene was financed by the f cast and crew, pretty much, which it was all right. Although in some scenes, I can clearly tell it was clearly shot in somebody's backyard, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not fooling anyone right there. I think there's only really two main characters, or two main stories that you really need to follow in order to get the story across, really. And what are those? Well, first we got the story of Heidi the Hippo, pretty much. The sexy hippo? Yes. Oh, God, I haven't seen a hippo portrayed like this since Fantasia. Okay. With he Heidi trying to... Well, she's depressed, she's... Trying to find happiness. Trying to find happiness, yeah, that's... I feel really Especially with her. her unfaithful boyfriend, Bletch, who... We, come on, you 
didn't know he was going to be a jackass? No, I mean, like, with the cat, like... Oh, that, right. I was thinking, come, come on, like, the dude's name's Bletch. You know he's going to be a bad guy. I, I hear that, what you said, that... Oh, yes. Uh, interesting fact. Walrus's, um... Well, I'm pretty sure in real life he would crush that cat because the walrus has a... A penis with a bone inside it, actually. Talk about a boner. Yeah. So... <laughs> it's, it's it's nasty, folks. You don't want to see it, believe me. I was thinking, how come Heidi doesn't immediately call him out? Like, come on, lady. His name is Bletch. You didn't think he was going to be an asshole, pretty much? Yeah. In the end... She kind of just snaps, pretty much. Like a female Rambo, but... And the second one? I guess that'd be the story of Robert, pretty much. The the hedgehog. Yo, he's got the cutest little accent. He's got... He's, he's kind of got, like, that thing with Elmer Fudd where he has to pronounce all his R's and W's in the wrong way, huh? Mm. Oh, good evening. My name is Wallet. And I... Uh, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got this... He's sort of like the... He's very naive. He's just starting out with the feebles and all that. And he's trying to establish himself, but he falls in love with Lucille, the poodle, and... Is that a poodle? Yeah, that's a poodle. I looked it up. I, apparently that's a, supposed to be a poodle a poodle or something mm -hmm. like that. Hey, they're, they're the cutest characters in the thing, so it's nice to see them like that. Lucille? Lucy. Cute? Yeah, I think she's, she's a little dog, so... But I was also surprised with how many puppets they were able to get. They got a huge variety of puppets. Not only have you got the uh, typical ones that you've seen on like Sesame Street and uh, uh, Muppets. Muppets, but we also got people in suits. We got a few animatronics here and there. We've even got Shelob, who makes a cameo in the movie. <laughs> yes, even before Lord of the Rings, folks, he was making uh, Lord of the Rings references in his films. Too many levels of nope. <laughs> and this whole film itself also was a bit expensive for Jackson at the time because he wasn't used to this stuff because a lot of the puppets as you can imagine they cost a lot of money to make pretty much that's why some of them are puppets while others are just people in animal suits I think mm -hmm. especially the larger characters are people in suits pretty much yeah it does have that Ralph Bakshi quality to it yes it's it's raunchy it's political it's in bad taste but it knows that it is, so you get the feeling that they really had a lot of fun on set with this. Right, there's a lot of like blood in it too, like it's yeah. not as gory as Bad Taste and Meet the f and and, and uh, dead Brain Dead. Brain Dead, yeah. Uh, no, it's not as violent because, uh, well, weirdly enough, originally they were trying to get this syndicated as a TV series, apparently. Yeah, like Japanese investors were more interested in a as a movie and not a TV show. And also, I'm pretty sure the TV investors saw the project and were like, we're not going to sell this to kids at all. But, I don't know, it's not as violent as the other films. I mean, it's got that, uh, it's got a few spud scripts in there that kind of remind me of watching a early Sam Raimi film. But, hmm? But there's also, like, some, there's, like, some, Things to be said if you were to make it into a TV show. I, I could see it work almost. It could be kind of like a... Kind of an HBO version of the Muppets. Which would be pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. You see? That's how you actually make an adult um, um, animated... Uh, I mean, that's how you make an adult puppet show. You don't have to do Happy Time Murders where you hold back. You have to actually go for it, actually. Yeah. And that's what I like about this film. Because you can tell there's a lot of passion involved with this film. Of course. With a lot of Peter Jackson's earlier stuff, you can always tell that he was giving it a hundred percent his all, pretty much. Oh yeah. Like he he didn't hold back. He knew that this film was ridiculous, and he was gonna go for it, pretty much. Oh yeah. Interesting fact. Um, apparently, most of the cast for this were New Zealand uh, local actors, pretty much, hmm. because they were shot for a very low budget. So a lot of these were just uh, local actors they got from some TV stations and some theater groups. And most of them were men, actually. Wow. Yeah, Heidi's voice is done by a man, actually. But there was one female, female voice actress. And she, I think, did the voice of the cat, Samantha, and Lucille the dog, actually. 
But not only that, you can tell that, they, that even the voice cast had some fun with this role also. Yeah. I love the, the some of the celebrity impersonations they do for some of the animals, which was very Muppet-esque in my way. Yeah, First, you got like... Um, Christopher, I uh, the, the Christopher Lloyd frog, right? Doing the voice of the frog. Uh, he's, I think the Christopher Lloyd frog is supposed to be like a, a homage to Christopher Lloyd's character from Taxi. Kind of like this stoned-out hippie kind of character. But then we got... The Peter Lorre sounding rat, of course. Because, honestly, that's the most perfect voice I would choose for a rat to do. Peter Lorre. And, of course, the duck. It sounds like Paul Lane for some reason. Because he's a quack, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense, that joke, but I'll figure it out later. Uh, but if there was something you really wanted to say about the film, what would it be? I would say that this movie, even with its flaws... Love that being like it's not really that funny. No, you can tell though they didn't want to make it funny, they kind of wanted it to be sort of dark. Yeah, like, like all that said though, like I think that this movie, like it took a lot of risks, mm -hmm. and um, it I liked it for what it was, so that's why I'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10. That's fair. Um, my real big issue with the movie is that you can tell this wasn't shot with the greatest budget in the world. Mm -hmm. The camera work is sometimes sloppy. The lighting is very bad in some scenes. I can barely see anything. But there was a lot of heart that went into this film. Like, Peter Jackson always seems to not be phoning in a lot of his stuff, so there's that. And with this film, I can clearly tell that he was giving it 100% as all. Especially with... Uh, just the film itself, it seems like he knew what he was making and he said, I'm going to make it anyways because I feel like it. Mm -hmm. And this film was very memorable for me. I've always wanted to look at some of Peter Jackson's earlier stuff and I'm glad I saw it. And I, I'm i going to admit, a lot of those songs that were in the movie are stuck in my head now. Actually. Sodomy? Yes, yeah, Sodomy. Oh man, I was just wishing that you know the guys from Monty Python would come around and do a crossover with them. That would be amazing. Come on, get Python to do that song. That'd be awesome. But, other than that, I'm going to give this film a 9 out of 10 because I'm a huge Peter Jackson fanboy, so there's that. But also, I love this film for its heart and its creativity with it. Mm -hmm. God bless. God rest. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button along with the bell for notifications. And make sure to follow us on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, and we're also on Patreon where you can tip us money or you can give us more money if you want any suggestions mm. on future product In, projects. Within the bounds of good taste, yeah. 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 I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Take care.